Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're we took a brief hiatus last week uh, and didn't stream, but we're back this week with our reimagination of content layer, kind of talking about um what we're trying to do um, with using the latest and greatest from effect to make the um, speed and experience with content layer better than it currently is. And the last time that we met, um, we were just kind of reviewing what we had done previously. I believe we had been working on this config builder, um, which is responsible for uh, listening to our ES build results. So the ES build service, I guess we can just familiarize ourselves with everything we did last time. The ES build, yes. It's a config mm -hmm. builder. I was pretty sure I had an ES build service in here. Uh, oh, yeah, there is one somewhere. Weird that it wasn't. Anyways, um, this ES build service that we have um, essentially listens to the content layer configuration file. Um, and every time there's changes, it emits those changes uh, into a an effect queue. Um, and we kind of hook into that the ES build plugin. Um, life cycle here uh, to allow us to write into that queue. <clears throat> and then um, the config builder listens to those results. Um, so um, essentially it allows us to uh, take from that results queue forever and then um, run a build um, on that uh, result um, which we started to sketch out last time, but didn't really get too far with. And then once we're done with the build, we um, write to the subscription ref, which then we were planning on essentially using elsewhere in the application to ascend, like listen to build changes that are happening. But for now, I think Tim and I were working last time on this um, this build script, and we had just started testing it out, and I think we had been doing that with this little scratch pad um, main file that I had come up with. And I think all this does is it grabs the CLI that we put together and runs it. Um, and I think we also had, I could have sworn we had a content layer config in here somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. but anyways, why don't we run, why don't we run this and just see if it blows up? Yes. Okay. So, so this, uh, is this missing? An error has occurred. I guess, yeah. I mean, we definitely need to improve the error messaging experience. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's let's go ahead and quit out of this for a sec. And um. Is this enough? No. Uh, Maybe we should so, just log out the errors. <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea. Um, Let's do that in the ES build service because I think that's where they're coming from. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. 
Could not resolve content layer dot config dot ts. Um, perhaps that's because um, mm -hmm. That's weird. Is that because it's empty? Maybe. Um. Let's see. Nope. Still not happy. Hmm. Let's look at the config I'm passing to ES build, because if I recall. Um I don't know why telescope doesn't find certain files. Um at the config I set up, but whatever. Packages core. So in ES build, we don't provide the build options here. We provide them. Is it here? I think in the CLI at the moment. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Um. Is it because it's using the absolute working directory? No, oh, the path box right in the error message. So the absolute working directory, I believe, has to do with output, not input. Okay. I think. Um... How did we have this working last time? Did I spell something wrong? Maybe it's because it's using ASM and it's not on the exports. Content life config.ts, right? Default is content layer.config.ts. Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, we had everything like everything was set up just like this the last time. Mm. I mean, maybe it's something dumb like I think it has to be in the working directory here or something. I don't think this is the case, but um, you yeah, know, this is weird. Um,
Very strange. All right, let's think for a sec. Maybe we just come out that comment out that working directory. Let's see what happens. The absolute working directory. Yeah. Oops. No. Oh. All right, Tim. Why do you always have to be right? <laughs> um, that's weird though because I was pretty sure the absolute working directory. Let me look this up. I was pretty sure. That this had to do with the um the input not or the output not the input. Mm. Is there like an output directory option? There is an output dir which we have. We're just using out file right now. Yeah, because we're compiling to a single file. And this is like the only output we produce. Um, and I could be totally wrong. It could be that the absolute working directory is like where the files are that we're looking for. Let's let me use this link. API is built. Uh, working directory. Specify the working directory to use for the build. It normally defaults to the current working directory of the process you're using to call ESBuilds API. The working directory is used by ESBuild for a few different things, including resolving relative paths given as API options to absolute paths and pretty printing absolute paths as relative paths and log in log messages. So I guess it is input, not output. Yeah, sounds like it. All right. Output um, location. Oh yeah, this is an output directory option. So we set that to dot content layer. Outer. Seems good to me. Yeah, because I think at the moment we're actually, yeah, we're writing this. Uh, yeah, we'll be going to the current directory right now. So then let's try this one more time. And let's pass the absolute, let's leave the absolute working directory blank and let's pass an absolute path and see if that just <laughs> like, solves the problem for now. Cannot use both out file and outer. Okay. I guess if we just prefix out file with a directory. I wonder if the directory has to exist. I think we went through this last time. <laughs> Something <laughs> this is like this is like coming back to me. Oh maybe not. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Cool. Cool, and this should have nothing in it. Great. All right, I Ooh. guess we just find some config now. In this. Yeah, so let's go. Let's go back to here. Uh, so on the left here. Oh, but we're going to, ah, shoot. We're going to want to be able to import from our packages, right? So, yeah. I think I have everything set up to do that, but let's see. Um,
Maybe not. Content layer core. Still not happy. Is this build happy though? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, no, don't open a window. Write that. Does look like he has build wrote something. Maybe over here we can watch. It wrote zero bytes though. True. I guess it strips unused imports, so maybe uh, it's for default in this case. There we go. All right. Maybe I just need to. Oh, okay. It might not be included in the TS config. That's true. I mean, I'll check that in a second. Um, let's open this over here. Yes. Cool. Um, I wonder, I wonder if we should be compiling this like this, or if we should be including it as an external at some point. Uh, I don't know. This works. Let me just see really quick. Uh, Can you change the, code? um... The kind of like the ES level. It looks like it's uh, e what level, is sorry. kind of like the um, ECMAScript level. ECMAScript oh, um, 2022, maybe. Oh, build contents. Yeah. Uh, so I go target. Let's see what the docs say here. Target. No, this is just like node and oh no, I can do target. Yes. Okay. What did, what did you want me to set this to? Does it give you options? No. <laughs> I think I can specify JavaScript. It says in the docs I can specify JavaScript language versions like ES2020, etc. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe ES2020. Oops. Yeah, that didn't seem to change anything. If you just um, I do colon E, and it usually rereads the buffer. And then, yeah. No. Maybe it Ooh. just uses var for everything. Yeah, maybe. Let's remove that for now. Um, I think in the current version of Content Layer, the packages themselves are marked as externals. Oh, but... You can set the target to a node version if you want. So you can just put in like node 18. Target. No, no, node 18.
Yeah. 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 All right. Um. Well, we wanted to test. Um. If. Builder. We essentially wanted to test if. I guess um, we need to import that file here and check yeah. if it's. Uh, we'll just see what we get. But it looks like it's setting up the symbol properly. So it's good. Our type guard should work. Let's take a look. Uh, import. Uh, well, at the moment, we don't have the absolute path, but we can compute it, right? So, uh, here. Outputs. Yeah, that's just the object key. So, interesting. Um, result dot outputs. No, result dot meta file dot outputs. Meta file. Um, what well, what did we want to do? We wanted to we wanted to import this file. Yeah. Right. Will that work? It doesn't have a file extension. I guess for now we can just append. Actually, you're right. I don't know. Don't know. I think in the current version of Content Layer, uh, let me look. But I think considering it's version, like a self-contained bundled file, can you even what? Oh no. Can we what? Sorry. Just evaluate it. I'm not sure how it exports work with eval then. One problem that would solve is um, cache busting, so we don't create a memory leak with uh, lots of imports. So you're saying like literally use like eval like that? <laughs> yeah. Does this wait? Does it? We would have to read the file in as well. Yeah. This just feels so dirty. It's probably it. no. It probably has some like sandboxing tools. I remember you uh, last last time we had spoken. I remember you had mentioned that you were writing. By the way, related to that memory leak, you had written something in the past that you said had worked around that memory leak issue or something. Um, it uses it re uses the common JS APIs though. What used? Got it. It was before ESM was a thing. Well, for now, we can grab object.key. Let's just be like really. Um, so do, 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 that gets us the file path and then 
One second, I am fairly certain that the current version of content layer does this. Does this import? So just give me one second. I'm trying to find it. It looks like a node there is. There's a VM module that you can use to um, compile modules. Yeah, that's what Mike had been saying, I think, one or two times ago. He was talking about potentially using like an, uh, an isolate or something like that to read the module in. Um, but we didn't go too far with it. Um, when we had spoken about it at that time. Um, but in content layer currently, this is how it's done. It is literally file. Uh, I'm going to do this like the dirty way. And then we'll clean like this up. It's, uh, it's an experimental. It's behind a flag at the moment. Oh, is it? Um, that source text module. Mm. And then outputs. And then oh my God, there we go. And then we can do. Let's just see if this works. Because I believe, I mean, in the current version of content layer, it uses like a file import path. And then the um, the current date is like appended to bust the cache. But that still means right. we're leaving a bunch of imports around um, in memory. So let's just see what this looks like. Okay. So now we can do uh, yield console.log. Imported that default. All right. So that at least does allow us to check if it's a config. Yes. You know, the other thing we could do if we wanted to avoid all of this like type ID gymnastics with config is we could probably figure out like a schema where like a, an effect schema, uh, which just validates the structure of this. Um, and for documents, since we don't know the exact structure of the documents at runtime, maybe we could come up with like a filter or something for documents to make sure that the array only contains documents. But, um, but yeah, that would be like another option if we wanted to avoid the type ID business because The problem is a document can can contain closures, and 
I don't know, using schema to like validate functions and particular stuff doesn't seem doesn't seem quite right. No, that's fair. That is fair. Um, I do think that we have to come up with a better solution for like actually importing the um content layer config file mm. into the current build process because like I said, the current strategy that is used by um by content layer is essentially this. I bought the outputs that already hash like a few because I have the identifier on the end. Yeah, I think I'm not exactly sure. Um, the comment in the code base previously was um, that that suffix was required for reloading in watch mode. Right. But we still have the, like you said, we still have that hash, which should change if we if the content of the config file changes. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna quickly, I, gonna quickly see if the VM module will help us. Yeah, it might be like an interesting thing for us to focus on with the time we have left to see if we can like figure out a better strategy for importing this file. In the meantime, I'm going to port over some code that I think will at least help us with grabbing the out file path that we need. Um, so uh, const out file path. <laughs> Dot map and uh file dot keys. We're going to need to find first. And Think. I can probably just paste that in.
Now we have a slightly more correct. Okay. Sorry about that. I added a little bit of code just to uh, make um, finding that um, finding the correct key that we want to import uh, a little bit more robust. Um, but anyways, what have you found so far, Tim? Uh, I think if we were to use the node VM module we will need to compile to a common JS. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. They have like so, a thing for doing modules, but it's uh, behind the flag right now. Is C do you think CJS is going to be a problem for the config file? I don't think so. So let's do, let's try it then. Um, let's go. Actually, I should be able to. Um, CLI. Hello. It's weird. Um, so with the yes uh, with the yes build, if I want to switch, is it just? Uh, I guess it's just the format. Yeah. Oh. No such element exception. That means that the code that I just wrote um, that means there could be an error. Oh, I know what it is. Okay. Maybe the compiled output doesn't have a file exception. It's entirely possible. Let's take a look. Does not. It's weird, though. Did it, it did before, though, right? No, I didn't. <laughs> Wait a minute. And how is this working in the old version of Content Layer? Uh, in Content Layer, it does have a file extension. Yeah. So... What does the bundle flag do? Bundle means inline the dependencies. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just remove the file extension, as you say. Not sure why. Well, now it's just because I'm importing and something that I can't import, but. Um, so instead of importing it, 
to if we're going to use the VM module, we'll then just use the file system to read it. So it would be like um, constfs. Oops. So let's see. Um, I'm still going to be using process.current working directory for now, but um, let's do one last option dot map here. Oops. Actually, we can do. I don't think we'll need to modify the path at all because. Uh, it would all be relative to the current process. It does? Okay. Um, read file as a string or read file as a uh, binary? String. Uh, Okay. Now what? No, you only need to yield it. And then if you import the VM module. For now. Um Okay. The first thing you need to do is create. Well, are we outputting as common JS? No, we are. We are now. I think because I changed Have the we, output um, format. Look at the compiled output just to see what it looks like. P or P. Oh, they both start with P. Yeah, I'll read it fine properly. All right, so it uses module.exports. So first thing we need to do is create like a context that the script will be running. So vm.createContext. And it just it takes an object. So it's a plain object and then just add a modules property with an exports field. Like so? Yeah. And exports would be a empty object. And then now we have the context. And now you can go vm.run in context and pass in the source code in the context. Yeah, we don't need the result here because it will be attaching the export 
to the context. Oh, really? So the time is here? Yeah. But that okay. um, might throw a defect that we'd need to wrap it in an effect of sync or something. We get rid of attempt. I did. It's called try. But we could just use effect.sync and keep them as defects. And maybe just log out the context for now. Let's see what we got. Module, module, module. Ah, so it's module, not modules. Oh, my bad. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, module, module try exports the default is what we want. Hey. Nice. That's pretty cool. In this way, we don't have to worry about memory links. Yeah, the only downside is obviously we have to emit CJS, but I guess it's not a huge deal since the content layer config is always going to be local. It's not part of like what's being distributed, right? Yeah. So. The other downside is I won't have any node APIs injected. It just says module, which might be a problem. <laughs> So if we have plugins that are using like process dot something, they won't work. Uh, I see what you're saying. Uh, and I'm not sure if it has access to require. Inside the VM. Yeah. Create context. While you're doing that, I am just going to quickly write the code that extracts the hash from the file name as well, because we probably need that. Uh, run in this context.
Okay. Well, we've got the code that will extract the S build hash at least. Um, you make any progress over there, Tim? I think we could spread in global this and just override the module and exports fields. Let's see what happens if I do that. Hello. Oh, this. Yeah, you can just pass in require and buffer and that kind of stuff into the context, and then the script will get access to this. All right, I guess. Let me just quickly check if it gets access to set timeout, etc. No, it doesn't. Uh... Hmm. So you're saying you think that like we could we could potentially pass everything in from the global object into our context or Yeah, I'm just saving a look now. It's unfortunate that the, uh, I mean, I understand, but it's unfortunate that the ESM supports behind a flag. Uh, yeah. Uh, BM dot in context. Mm -mm, that does not work. Oh, never mind. It doesn't. So. I'll just send you a snippet on Discord. Perfect. And then after we try this out, we'll probably have to wrap up in a bit. It's getting a little bit late here, but I do want to at least try this out. From Context equals vm dot create context and plus pass in global this individual. Copy. So with this, we should be able to do things like require and buffer and etc. in the content layer config, right? Yeah. 
Let's try it. I don't know. Um, well, you'd still use imports here, and it will get compiled into requires. So here, uh, one thing you could try is just console.log a buffer or something. To which are all provided by the node runtime. One, two. Cool. Great. Cool. Awesome. All right. I feel like progress was made. I know it was a short stream, but um, this is, I feel like this was, a, we had been thinking this was going to be a bigger problem than it. I mean, I'm sure we'll run into issues with the strategy we've chosen for importing the config <laughs> file, but for now, I feel for like sure. this is. I feel like this is a really good uh, start, at least. Um, and if we go back to Config Builder, so um, we've also got access to the ES Build hash um, from the file name as well, which we're probably going to use for, I don't know, something. Um, Content Layer uses this hash for quite a few things, um, like caching. And, and whatnot. So um, I feel like outputting the hash as an independent field um, from the build is probably desirable. Um, cool. Well, this is great. Um, so thank you very much for hopping on for such a short stream. Um, but yeah, I feel like this was good. So um, we'll try to keep the weekly cadence if we can moving forward. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. -bye.